Ladies and gentlemen, joining us today all the way from Nebraska is Dennis Grace, the first congressional district candidate for the Libertarian Party running to represent us in the U.S. House of Representatives. Very excited to have him on with us today. He is also the chair of the Dodge County Libertarian Party. Dennis, welcome to Adam versus the Man. How are you doing today, brother? Hi, Adam. Um, can you hear me okay? Looking and sounding great here. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, doing doing pretty well. Uh, it's a little slow around here. Uh, this is Fremont, Nebraska. We're a small town, 26,000 people. And just trying to uh, organize some um, uh, public activities lately. And uh, um, I'm, I'm a pretty big advocate of um, local solutions for local problems. So I've been out trying to uh, find where those problems are and um, see what we can do to fix them. So, so how is that campaigning in Nebraska in the age of coronaphobia? Are people still coming to events? Uh, no, uh, there have been uh, most of the um, uh, county fairs and 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 parades and and whatnot have been canceled. Um, so it's door to door and um, wherever I, I happen to go out. Um, dropping off some some literature and uh, you know I'm, I'm more concerned with um, spreading the uh, word of um, locality of, of keeping government and keeping all the decisions as as local as possible so um, that's that's where the campaigning is, is has been going um, showing up at park cleanup events uh, around here um, you know kind of things uh, things along that that nature. You know, I, I imagine springtime, summertime in a, in a very rural agricultural state like Nebraska, uh, there county fairs, state fairs, uh, all sorts of agricultural types of gatherings, probably a very big deal. I, I don't imagine that, that you can have a virtual 4-H gathering. That just uh, doesn't work, does it? No, it's uh, um, pretty pretty difficult. And I, I, I tell you, it, it kind of goes back to your your earlier conversation. I said that I wanted or that I had a little bit to talk about with uh, uh, suicide. When, when, oh, when, don't, don't when, worry. We'll get to the we'll get to the downers, Dennis. Come on, yeah. man. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's, let's start with some positivity and the challenges yeah. running as a libertarian right now. Sure. sure. So uh, um, it's we already have have, have people that are, are down there uh, looking for um, something new, some 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 uplifting uh, uh, motivation type of of person to to come forward, and that's that's kind of the focus that we that we have to stay with, and that's why um, I'm uh, again an advocate of getting out and showing people what they can do to um, improve not only their their lot but improve their community with strong communities are built by strong people which are going to build a strong strong nation um so that's that's the positivity that that we have to bring is um there there hasn't been a a time where an illness has brought america to its knees and we're not going to let that happen we're going to keep keep moving forward um find find what makes us uh, uh, unique and kind of drive with those. And, and I think that that's the locality, local. Uh, well, Dennis, I, I, would, I would challenge you on the language there. And you know, I'm, I'm not a grammar Nazi, but I am kind of a, a, a precision Nazi when it comes to language. And it's really important as, as libertarians and challenging the narrative that we challenge Absolutely. the very wording that is used. You, you said, you know, America brought to its knees by a virus. I'm afraid that even using that phrasing is blaming the virus when we know that sure. even if the virus is as bad as they said it is and before we learned that it's not right it, even if it was as right. bad as the worst projections that you could hardly say that that's bringing us to our knees or that even that we're, we're overreacting out of fear to that because this really is uh, as, as, as a phenomenon, it's what are we experiencing as a country right now 
the virus is actually a very small part of it, isn't it? Wouldn't you say that the the government's response is what's uh, you know bringing us to our knees? Absolutely, yes. Um, it, w- it was uh, um, more of a, a a statement as to what we are allowing to to happen than and what's uh, um, really really going on. Um, we're allowing our worst fears to take over um, and to uh, make us make these these judgments and these changes in our in our lives and in our communities um, without really any, I guess, uh, I don't want to say proof, but with, without any reason for it. I mean, uh, what was it? Early on, we heard that um, uh, what sunlight and vitamin D and, and some of these other things will will uh, kill this, this virus. So we went outside and then it was, well, you can't go outside. You have to stay away from, from the parks. <laughs> And whatnot. Uh, driving, uh, driving around my town, and knowing that people wanted to get out and just go for a walk in a park, go let their dogs run in a park, and watching as this stuff was taped down, yellow crime scene or uh, uh, crime scene or caution tape. Man, I mean, what a what a bummer the summer's been, you know. <laughs> well, Dennis, specifically about Nebraska, you know, I, I've yep. been trying to get a sense as we cover this pandemic, as we cover this fear pandemic, uh, a sense of where things are worse uh, than, than others. And generally, you know, New York City, uh, we found that urban and, and uh, you know, I hate to say uh, that there is a left-right thing here that has us more aligned with with conservatives, but it is true that uh, from, from at least everything I've put together, I think it's beyond anecdotal analysis at this point. And, and partly because of, of Trump uh, originally saying, you know, hey, we got this, no big deal, kind of like the flu. Uh, but generally, conservative areas have been more uh, appropriately skeptical of mask policy and shutdowns and lockdowns. And I would imagine also just Nebraska being being very rural. Um, and and I, I would say even there's a certain, uh, I, if I may kiss your constituents butts for a second here on your behalf perhaps if you want to take credit for this go ahead but in in rural in, in rural communities and like from my experience with nebraska there's a certain scientific logical nature by which they see the world you can't deny science when it depends when you're when, you, when you're growing crops and raising livestock you know you you have to look at the facts you have to look at what works and so th- those types of people seem better equipped to analyze you know, the, the, the fear mongering around the virus and put it in perspective. I'm surprised that you, from what you've described so far, that Nebraska is even having as much of a problem with it as it sounds like. Are, are people really buying into it there? And, and how much do you think that compares to the rest of the country? So um, people aren't, uh, and with with Nebraska, uh, we have two very, very large cities, uh, Omaha and, and Lincoln. Um, those cities tend to take it it seems their cues from the coast um they're a a little more uh liberal leaning um uh, or at least those are the loudest most vocal voices um where the the rest of the state like uh where i live again twenty six thousand people um people here are extremely skeptical of anything that anybody tells them they're uh, a little slower to, and I, I used to, I used to joke about this uh, growing up. I, uh, you know, living in, in Nebraska, we get uh, fashions ten years too late. We get music about five years too late. Um, we, we we're, we're just very slow moving here. And then I realized that that's not a bad thing. We just we're not going to take your word for it. We're going to wait it out. We're going to see what happens. We're going to collect and analyze. Yeah, hey, yeah, I, I got to say with music and culture, that, that that's that's sort of genius when you step, like if you could plan it one way or another, like, no, no, no. You know how you guys get excited, you, the rest of America, you get excited over all sorts of crappy music on the radio. I'm going to wait 10 years and then dip into current pop mm-hmm. music when all the shit right. has been filtered out, you know, like <laughs> with, with fashion, culture. I, I think that, you know, it's not like you're 10 years behind on science 
and I, I, you know, I hate to go back to the example, but you know, rural uh, communities and you know, agricultural technology, it's uh, where you're still cutting edge with that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's it's it really uh, has highlighted what um, I think Nebraska has going for it, and uh, again, we uh, we have a uh, a group of young people that are trying to find ways to flee Nebraska instead of s sticking around. And if, if they can just, if they can kind of um, get what I didn't get until I was later, and that is that, hey, we, we're not trying to chase you out. We just want to take our time. Let's let science, let's let facts speak for themselves. We don't, we don't engage in rumor. We don't engage in... Uh, you know, when when we hear something, we take it, we're going to analyze it, we're going to put it up against what the rest of the um, evidence and information is showing us. And from there, we're going to make a decision on what to do. Now, that's what my area is doing. And that, that's kind of um, where they where they take their, their cues. Omaha and Lincoln are, are um, a little bit, actually quite a bit different. Um, there, there's a vocal, whether they're a majority or a minority, the, the way that we vote here, um, you would guess them to be a minority, but they're a very loud uh, vocal group. And um, Does your district include either of those cities or, or parts uh, of the urban area? Lincoln, right. So, uh, yeah, so, um, so my district includes the uh, capital of, of Lincoln, where... Um, th th there's something going on right now. There's a, I believe it's a bowling alley in Lincoln. The uh, owner of it is fighting mask mandates and saying, uh, in a sense, I own my own business. You can't tell me what to do in here. You can't impose uniform uh, regulations on, on my employees or, or who comes in here. And the city has, uh, has shut them down. Um, they, uh, I believe they were there this past Saturday, roping the place off and uh, making sure that he didn't have any uh, fixtures and um, equipment inside to um, carry on business, even illegally, if he if he wanted to. Um, so we're we're definitely seeing the overreach in the big big cities, and that's you know I I'm not sure if this happened in 2017 or 2019 where we're not looking at. Um, election years. I, I, you know, really, really hate to say that, but I've been saying it for a while now. November fourth, COVID's probably going to go away. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, but, no, I, I, I think that's a pretty. Uh, you know, Dennis, if I may just interrupt on that, I think that is uh, a pretty, a pretty safe and a pretty important prediction that yeah. uh, w with the election you are going to see. Uh, it's not that, hey, COVID's going to go away, but you're going to see just a lot of the incentive for talking about it is going to go away because right. it's all right. about the political manipulation. Right. Yes, sir. So when, when you're in Nebraska, you're, you're, you're in the Lincoln area, you're going and knocking on doors. Are you wearing a mask and are people responding with any kind of, uh, you know, fear or what are you doing kind of response or is it just... A typical political reception. I don't. I don't. Uh, first of all, I, I don't go about my day with a, a mask. I do have one here. Um, unfortunately, it's uh, uh, it's not a Huskers mask, but it's one of my longtime uh, teams there. Um, so I I don't go about my day um, mask wearing. However. Um, I want to go into Menards. Their their policy is that you mask up. So I'm naturally going to mask up because what I need is in the, in those doors. Um, so I'm going to abide by that. I will carry my mask with me if somebody wants me to wear it. Um, you know, uh, uh, speaking to to somebody, I'll I'll put it on. I'm not going to chase somebody away because uh, they may feel safer with me with a mask on. So, yeah, I, um, I, I haven't run into too many that are, are actually concerned about it, though. Um, that wasn't the same story in June or May as it is now, but it seems that 
uh, a little bit of the leeriness is 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 lifting, and that um, I, I think people are are wanting to see faces, um, you know, instead of uh, wondering who's who's behind the mask. So, all right. So, Dennis, your day job is that you're an insurance investigator in charge of a team of investigators across eight states in the Midwest. Does that give you? Uh, how, how does that connect to your your worldview and influence your policy or your ability to connect with voters there? Um, that, that is, uh, I'm I'm now a business owner. I'm um, as of uh, the start of the COVID crisis um, when our hours <laughs> were were cut. Um, I I had to search for for something else. The uh, license. Oh, I want to congratulate you, but if it's like, hey tough shit you lost your job but now you own the business and everything sucks you know i don't want to congratulate you if that's the case interesting circumstance there but so sorry uh, to interrupt how, no. how are things now under corona for you uh still still slow um and i i don't know if it's uh if it's a a marketing thing but i've been told that um uh, by people with my previous employer that um things are still slow there Insurance companies are still working remotely. They're not. Uh, they're not sending as um, uh, as many investigators out to to handle those uh, cases. Now, um, how? So your your question was, how does that affect my my worldview? Um, I, I've I've always been inquisitive. I've always been fact finding. I've always tried to be a little more um, uh, stable, a little more, a, a little less flighty. That hasn't worked. Um, I, you know, allowed my uh, imagination to run wild and to uh, dream of, of, of bigger and better things that, that I can do. But um, as far as my worldview, I, too, am like a typical Nebraskan. Um, I want the evidence um, and an uh, uh, investigator. I, I try to not make judgments based upon headlines, first of all. Uh, I, I see a lot of that. You were talking about... Uh, Facebook earlier or um, social media headlines. We, we, we've seemed to become a headline uh, only uh, nation where whatever flashes across that, that screen is the substance of the story. We don't need to know what's going on in the body of the story. As long as they tell us something exciting, we're going to listen to that and not worry about the rest. If you read the story, you're going to realize it's probably different than what that headline says. Um, so that's uh, that. Um, I, I think made me a better investigator. I also believe that it, it makes me a a, a strong Nebraskan. Um, how's that for a political statement? Um, and a a good uh, um, you know a great representative, um, looking for facts and not and not going with the heart first. So, all right. Well, Dennis, I got two more big questions for you. No. And, uh, we're gonna before so what I, I wouldn't don't worry we'll get to the suicide that's the second one no, I wouldn't yeah. I wouldn't dare let that go but I wouldn't dare let go of this third rail either that you've got sitting here on your website under policy statement okay abortion death penalty euthanasia as long as we're on downer subjects today let's jump into this but at, why why, did, why is this a policy statement on your website how is it that this is an important issue as a libertarian to connect with your constituency. Uh, that was that was actually asked for. Um, that was one of the first questions that I I, I got uh, once my my website came up in 2019. I think is when I started it late uh, about uh, December. Uh, that was one of the first emails that that I I, I got, and um, I made a promise to the person that sent it that. I would never hide from an issue, whether I, I know it or not. You know, I'm I'm a dope. I know that. Uh, I don't I don't have all of the answers. I I haven't studied everything. Hold on, uh, you're running for office in America. You're not allowed to say that. Dennis. You're Come right. On, you're right. Heard. You're right. I've got to brush up on that. Um, so uh, I, I politicians that. with humility who know their <laughs> limits. <laughs> we don't. We don't do that. We don't let that. We don't know. Not allowed in America. Exactly. Um, so um, with I, I, I decided 
I'm not going to give this person a a, a run of the mill answer. I'm not going to say, well, it's 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 your choice. You know, it's uh, I I don't want government intrusion. I wanted to sit down, and um, I so I sent uh, an introductory email back or a, a response, and I said, you know, I'm away from my computer. Let me get back to the office, and I want to give you some actual time to type out a response. Um, and, uh, so, so from that, I was able to then kind of, uh, show everybody that, and it's been asked repeatedly. Um, that is a huge issue in Lincoln. In fact, there was just a, um, it was to me kind of sickening to listen to, but, uh, on Tuesday, there was a, um, a vote in our state legislature regarding, uh, an abortion measure, um, so the uh, state legislature was trying to, I, I think, um, put some kind of a, a, a ban on um, a particular abortion procedure. And um, it, it had already been ruled un, unconstitutional, but they were trying to push it through anyway. So, um, so anyway, that is on the website because it is a hot topic here. Um, and, uh, I, I said, I'm again, I'm not going to hide from it, but I want everyone to know exactly what I'm thinking about it. You know, if you're looking at it, you'll notice that the abortion side of it is very lengthy. Um, and then we, uh, we get a little bit smaller when we go to death penalty and, uh, euthanasia. There's a lot that, that goes into the abortion argument. Um, and I, I, I think that, I'm going to make somebody mad with with that statement, no matter what. So I might as well throw it out there. Let them be mad before they come and talk to me, and maybe I'll I'll you know turn some heads after that. So, all right. So finally, what was it that you wanted to convey about our topic earlier in the show? We got really deep into suicide oh, and COVID, and and hopefully you know after. We haven't gotten this serious examination out of the way and, and taking scope of, of the tragedy here because it just, you look at the cost of the cure being worse than the disease, it is undeniable now and it is an inescapable tragedy that you have to be inhumane to ignore. And so, you know, right. addressing this with positivity and, and hope and, and encouragement for people to stay connected, especially right now, rather than sweeping it under the rug, I think is critically important. So. Dennis Grace, candidate for U.S. Congress, grab this third whale, third rail, and, and and wave it around your head. What do you got on suicide? All right. So, um, one of the um, groups of people that we we talk about uh, uh, veteran suicides, which is important to me, being a Navy veteran. Um, it's uh, it it. We, we, we can look at the deaths in Fort Hood, which again, I've, I've just started um, uh, looking into and I've got a couple letters that I, I want to send down there. As an investigator, um, I, I want to know what the hell's going on at, at Fort Hood. But um, back in, I think it was March or April, the Omaha tribe of, I don't know where you can see that, uh, Omaha tribe of Nebraska, sent out a uh, resolution. It was a declaration of a uh, state of emergency. Um, I, I printed that off and I keep it right here on, on my wall so that I know who I'm fighting for every day. Uh, this is not a, a voting block. I think the Omaha uh, reservation has 3,000 people. Um, the Winnebago, maybe 5,000. The uh, Ponca aren't even in my district, um, and the uh, Santee aren't. But those are important people to me, as as far as uh, humanity goes, um, and they are left behind in Nebraska. We we don't talk about them. It was um, probably I, I I think when I started this campaign um, is when I first even began to grow up and look at who the Omaha people are. Uh, I grew up in a city 
named for them, and yet I never went to know them. I, I never went to meet them, see them, even know where they came from or 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 where they lived. Um, they issued this uh, declaration of a uh, state of emergency due to the number of suicides that they saw, and uh, so as suicides, drug overdoses, and um, domestic violence killings, um, and it, it, they were surging, and. Part of this problem was brought forth by a 16-year-old girl um, who has now become a, a national spokesperson uh, and, and face for missing and uh, murdered indigenous women. But it's not just around here. Um, Pine Ridge, uh, CJ knows knows this, uh, Pine Ridge uh, Reservation, um, the Ogallala Sioux up in the Black Hills, 150% higher suicide rate than the rest of the nation. Uh, men on Pine Ridge are expected to live to the age of 48. Women to the age of 52. Um, uh, Congress approved uh, $500,000 per year for three years to fight uh, uh, suicides with the native tribes, but only 43 of the 566 tribes got that money. Um, we're, when, when, when we talk about... Uh, reasons for uh, for suicides. Um, again, in, in Pine Ridge, uh, I don't have the numbers down here, and it's because th they're a little more skeptical of what Nebraska will actually do for them, so they keep their numbers to themselves. But uh, per capita income in Pine Ridge averages $9,334. That's an average between your highest earners and your lowest, $9,000 per year. You think that might lead to to some suicide? No jobs, 70% uh, unemployment, 44% uh, I think live below the the uh, poverty um, line, um, and then you put coronavirus on top of that, and the um, the tribes lock themselves in because they know that they're in poor health and that they aren't receiving the aid that they were supposed to be getting. So they've locked themselves in. They they, they keep outsiders out. Um, back in May, I, I took up uh, collections for masks, um, some some handmade masks, and I deliver those uh, to the Omaha tribe. And I had to. They allowed me in because number one, I masked up. Number two, I was bringing supplies. And number three, I had called the uh, police department, and I had people waiting at their checkpoint for me. Um, so they they allowed me in, um, but. All of this is going to lead to higher suicide rates. And my contention is our government could give two shits about it, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I didn't want to want to cuss in this in this interview, um, but it's 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 realistic between this and between blood quantums. And I'm, I'm not I'm not satisfied. And I'm sorry. I also said that I don't lead with my heart. I, I wait for for the evidence. But to me, the evidence is a few hundred years clear. Um, it, this is about letting them drop off uh, so that we don't have to worry about those folks anymore. Um, and it, it's, it's sad to me. And I made a promise to those people, um, the, the Omaha, the uh, Winnebago, the um, Santee Sioux and the Omaha or the uh, uh, Ponca tribe of Nebraska that whether they're in my district or whether there's really anything that one man can, can do, I'm going to do everything that I, I, I can. I'm going to use whatever platform that I have to, to bring some light to this. There's uh, suicide isn't, you know, it's, it's not just uh, a, a problem with the person next door. It's a problem with the community that we don't see, you know. So um, those are just some of the numbers that I, I, I wanted to put out there. And um, I, uh, it's, it's something that I suffer with myself um, coming from uh, some of the background that, that I do. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to let this uh, this issue escape without somebody talking about it. So, well, come on, Dennis. I appreciate all that. That's amazing. But you got to give us some. Well, you can't give us that much of a downer and not not end with at least some 
some hope, you know, some some way that that you're you're connecting with people, and I'm I'm grateful for you, and and so many other libertarian candidates because even just going yeah. knocking on doors right now, I mean that's a pretty big suicide prevention effect. I mean, I yeah, yeah I don't want to like you know again yeah. pull numbers out anywhere, but hey, how many people right now in the United States are just desperate because they haven't seen another person yeah. who's been willing yeah. to interact with them face to face in the last few months, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, here, here, here's some positivity that uh, um, that everybody can do in their in their own community. Um, a car club in Fremont um, understood the the gravity of uh, some of the older folks having to sit in their um, their uh, homes, their um, health care facilities and not be able to get out and, and engage in, in activities. So these guys got out, uh, sorry, guys and, and women, um, these classic car owners, and they did a parade, a drive-by parade. Um, and the fire department's doing it around here uh, for birthdays. Um, the uh, car clubs, motorcycle clubs are all getting together, uh, having parades of, of their own to make sure that people are still social distancing but that people feel um, wanted, they 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 feel like uh, somebody's paying attention, and that they aren't just left behind to um, not be able to enjoy the the world. So they're bringing bands, they're they're setting up these uh, car shows, and they're just driving through the parking lots as slow as possible, waving. And it's it uh, again that goes back to the strong communities build a stronger nation. Um, Absolutely, and, and 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 that's again that's that's one of my my uh, biggest points there. It's 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 one of the things that that pushes me. Um, be a be a good neighbor. Look out for the person next to you, and um, we're gonna we're gonna get through just about anything. So awesome, well said, Dennis. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. Dennis Grace. For U.S. Congress, running as a libertarian in Nebraska to represent Nebraska's first congressional district, including Lincoln. If you know anybody in the area, send them his way who can help knocking on doors, having a positive impact in the community. Obviously, a candidate with a strong message and a race worth getting involved in. And he's got some freedom on hand there. Look at that. Great branding representation. You know how to kiss my butt. Thank you so much for joining us, Dennis. <laughs> I do. Uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, and the sticker. All right. Look at that. All right. Uh, I got to cut you off before this turns into a commercial for my yes, merchandise. Sir. All right. Dennis, thank you so much. The website is electdennisgrace.com. Exactly how it 